Cool. Well, uh, I hope we're live now. Having some technical difficulties this morning, and uh, but we got Amber. So hey, Amber. So glad you could make it. Oh, glad to be here. Looks like we're on YouTube, but that's cool. Yeah. Um, well, I'm gonna get warmed up to sort of do the warm ups I, I like to do. Uh, okay. I like to warm up, uh, you know, with these uh, ellipses. <laughs> Yeah, they really help when I warm up before I draw. Yeah, I think so too. And then, you know, and I find, <laughs> well, <laughs> I find, you know, it's, it is also nice to get warmed up for a tattoo also, you know, mm. just, I mean, you show up, you, you know, you don't want to roll out of bed and start tattooing on people, right? You have to, you want to get warmed up. You want to get, um, you want to get prepared. Yeah, we were a little late starting today, so I don't know. I don't know if anybody's gonna be able to make it. But um but Amber, you're here, so I really appreciate you coming. No problem. It's uh it's actually um October 30th. It's the day before Halloween. Yes, we have a Halloween parade in town tonight. Oh fun. You dress up? Yeah, the whole family does. What's your costume this year? Um, a friend of mine and I are going as the aunts from Practical Magic. Oh, fun. And Francis and Aunt Jet. I am Francis. <laughs> That's cool. Did you make your costume or did you buy, buy it? No, I made it. I, I own a lot of witchy stuff, so it was really easy to just pick something out of my closet that looked extra witchy. Cool. I even have the pointed hat. Oh, fun. Yeah, I was thinking about that, too. Uh, interesting you say that. It's... Come on. <laughs> I'm not trying to squeeze it in there, but I mean, you know, that last one was, was pretty rough. But I was thinking about, uh, you know, like, witch's hat and um, just how we could, you know, so start off with start off with an ellipse all right we're sketching we're getting warmed up gang all right so <laughs> we're getting warmed up so if your ellipse looks better than this then i'm i am proud of you right but anyway so all right so where's the center of this thing well so that's like it looks like the center but i would say you know put the center back just a little a little bit further you know don't put it don't put it right in the middle, put it back a little bit. That gives it some perspective. Then you can draw another ellipse, half one, and then there you go, cone on top, which is hat, right? Bang. Once you have the form down, then you can really, you know, you could of course like you could of course like really start to, you know, put some some details and stuff to it which is fun i don't know what a witch i don't know what all goes into a witch's hat but i'm just saying you know or i guess you know you could also give it a little bit of character almost has like a sort of a, yeah to it. It's been well worn, you know what I mean? Yes, that's more like my hat. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I don't know what stuff looks like. But anyway, you know, it's um it's warm up time, right? We're just getting warmed up and you know it, it is definitely uh you know it's Halloween think we got these little you know what uh what are some of the common common themes right common sort of representations we see 
jack o' lanterns and stuff. So, but to get this sort of pumpkin shape. Again, start off with the basic. That's a nice little pumpkin. Of, thanks. Start off with the basic sort of shape, and then you can start to make you know some of the details. But think about like you know where the eyes and stuff might go. Carve them out. With. Ah. Okay, just sort of sketch me. Getting warmed up, getting the getting your muscles warmed up, getting your getting your hands and your eyes all connected. Hey, good morning, creature. Great to see you. Thanks for coming. Good morning. Thanks for the invite. Love the Halloween stuff. Oh, thanks. It's that uh, it's that time of the year. I don't know where this goes. I think maybe there. I see a little bit there. Something. It's the most. I don't know. I don't know. It's, yeah, it's, it's, pretty it's pretty bad, but uh, yeah, a little bit of perspective. <laughs> well. Um, yeah, just starting to, oh, terrible. But I'm feeling warmed up. I don't know about you. So um, <laughs> have fun with it, right? Just, I, I, that's what I think. That's what I would say. Have fun with it and uh, enjoy yourself. Um, we're here for a good time, right? Not a long time. Anyway, uh, there you are. All right. Sorry for the delay, everybody. I was having some technical difficulties, but we're we're here. We made it. Um, I wanted to to also carry on with what we were starting last week and do some stretching. Right, stretch out the stretch out the hands and stuff before we get started. So, you know, so again, I'm gonna like just stretch out. I'm gonna extend my arm, and then I'm gonna I'm actually gonna push down just a little bit. Right, I just wanna I wanna extend these. Stretch these flexors. That actually feels really good. Yeah, just kind of hold it. As long, as long, don't hurt yourself, right? I think that's the thing. So if you're with us and you're stretching out, right? We're uh, we're just stretching our stretching our flexors and our extensors in our forearm. That's really the thing that we're doing right now. Okay, and then you know, go to the other side. Do the other side, right? And just, just give yourself just a little bit of just a little bit of stretch. That's what we're doing. We're not trying to we're not trying to like over hyperextend it or anything like that. Just to just to feel the stretch and then you know if you want to you want to if you want to stretch it more with this one you can go you know make a fist and then you can start to pull that right you can pull that and that will will give you just a little bit more stretch if you need it right okay very good now i'm gonna go palm up right stretch this way okay again just just sort of hold it, right? Am I the only one making ugly faces right now? No. no. Don't go. Well, I, you know, I don't want to tell you not to go so far, but I would just say focus more, like put a little more pressure on the palm. So that way you're really, you're really feeling it here. You really feel it there. That you're really trying to stretch, right? That's lovely. And also, so if that's too much, you can actually make a fist and you can, you can stretch this way and that doesn't give you as much it doesn't give you as much stretch with with this form right okay the overhand all right and then so do the other side uh trying to get on camera yeah <laughs> right i'm new here all right so yeah just just to stretch it out and that's i think that's that's really good you know and then Definitely let your, you know, try to let your, you know, your shoulders hang. Swing your arm in there just a little bit, right? Just let your arm just sort of swing a little bit. That'll, that'll loosen up the shoulder. Good. I think that that's going to be, uh, it's something that I really want 
to encourage everybody to do. It's a really important part of just taking care of yourself, you know, so that way that you are, um, you know, getting the most out of your, out of your tools, right? Um, got Kyle Olson joining us. Um, excellent. So, uh, you're right. We were doing this a uh, little bit of sketching, right? We got warmed up. I think we're feeling good. Um, there, of course, is more stretches and there's more like, you know, sort of good advice. Amber, you gave us some good advice yesterday. I really thought about that, about rolling the hips forward, you know, sort of <laughs> thinking about posture, right? I really like that idea of like think up and then it kind of helps your, you know, your head to go, you know, so you're not so, you know, so crane down all the time. You're not so tense. Tight. Get that shrimp back going on. I think mm. there's there's some moments I, I know it. I can feel it. I'm super tight and I'm like trying to, you know, I'm trying to do something and it's like, you know, maybe in that, in that very brief, for that very brief moment, I got to hold it, but then you got to let that, you know, let that tension out. And you have to try to, uh, you know, try to get back into a good posture. So, yeah, roll those hips forward and watch that back. Hey, Kyle Olson, good morning. Good morning, morning Kyle. Kyle. How goes it? How are we doing? We're on the start today, but it's um, definitely it's Monday morning. <laughs> Halloween season. Right. I'm not, I'm not much of a Halloweener, but... <sighs> <laughs> that surprises me. Okay, but yeah, but I'm interested in in you all's costumes. So, Amber, you said practical magic. Yes, uh, I'm going as Aunt Francis, and a really good friend of mine is going as Aunt Jet. I'm not familiar right. with the narrative, but I, but I, it sounds great. So you're going to be witchy sort of characters, and yeah. it's going to be a good time. Awesome. As long as you post pictures, I'm happy. <laughs> we went to a Halloween you. party the other night and we had so much fun we forgot to take pictures. Uh -huh. So I'm going to uh -oh. try. But my grandkids, all three of them are going to be Spider-Man. Uh -huh. Even the girls. Even Spider out. family. Spider family. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. We're going to try to get the picture of the three Spider-Man men for them pointing at each other. I know it's nice. me, I don't that word. That's fun. Kyle, how about you? Are you going to be um, doing any Halloween celebrations? Uh, I'm going to be tattooing a jack-o'-lantern on a hand. Oh, okay. Uh, so, I guess that works. Um, the wife and I, we, we did a a birthday party um and we dressed up for that and that was a uh, everybody dressed up as like their favorite tim burton character and like the wife did uh mrs spider and i was mr caterpillar i can't remember his name or whatever uh from james and the giant peach nice so that was really fun um, but yeah other than that probably won't be dressing up tomorrow and just gonna be tap a tubing yeah that's awesome uh jack-o-lantern on the hand that's a lot of commitment, I think, to the, but that to the holiday to the Halloween, you know, aesthetic. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, it's, but I, you know, it's going to be amazing. So you're getting that, you're getting that all designed up. Yeah, that's what I'm uh, starting on right now. So starting on the thumbnails. Oh, cool. Are you going? Are you thinking color or black and gray or what? What's uh, your uh... probably a bit of both, honestly. Um, make the jack-o'-lantern color and everything like that. And then just like the little surrounding bits, just keep it all black and gray. So nice. see happens, get that you know? brilliant orange pop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about you, James? Yeah. No, yeah, no, no uh, Halloween celebrations uh, this year. Um, I'm going to, make sure that the doors are locked and the lights are <laughs> off so none of the you know <laughs> so no none of the kids like you know get out of here you get off my lawn kids something yeah, like that right you know <laughs> just, yeah instead no, of giving no, out candy you give out like a thing of rocks just when here 
No. Anyway. <laughs> Marbles and rocks. Yeah. That's what well, I'm no giving fun. you. Zero fun. All you have to do is make sure this year you give out stuff and give out boxes of raisins. They will never come back to your door. <laughs> that that's okay. true. They will remember that's the raisin guy. We're not that's going the raisin there. guy. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I suppose so. Yeah. No, uh, and it's, uh, but it's fun. I do enjoy, um, um, you know, I enjoy seeing all of the the creativity and all of the you know the effort that goes into. It. I think that's a lot of fun, isn't it? Uh, isn't it Devil's Night tonight? Something like that. Mischief yes. Night around here. Yep. Same thing. Mm -hmm. Fun. Oh, Chris, that's when our town had a parade tonight. Oh, cool. that way the entire town. It's got the parade and there's no mission built. Mm. <laughs> Creature, how about you? Do you have a do you have any um fun Halloween costumes? Um so I'm a humongous advocate of Halloween. Uh this year I can't dress up because today I go and sign the paperwork on the new studio. Nice. Nice. Cool. I'm going to be very busy. And so we we got the phone call this weekend. So now I can actually tell you guys what we're doing. Want to know? Yes. Yes. We're starting. You know how all of the tattoo schools popped up on the internet? You know, all them things that are they are lacking. Well, I'm going to take all the best of the best because I think that the tattoo community and the rest of the community need to come and come together because we do therapeutic and fun tattoos. That's what we do. But we're not a we're not going to be a big shop. We're going to have two chairs that are full body things for, you know, uh, that sort of thing. And then we're going to have two flash tattoo chairs. But the bulk of our studio is going to be teaching people art, drawing, reading, uh, uh, practicing on synthetic skin. And I'm going to take a student all the way from knowing nothing all the way up to a professional level. And they're going to have one-on-one -on -one mentorship and they have to have a certain amount of time on skin that their mentor has to be right there. And then after that, they have to mentor someone for the same amount of time. And then, you know, there's a whole bunch. I mean, the whole curriculum is very massive. Um, and I made it so it's affordable and reasonable. There isn't the tragic apprenticeship stories uh, the, the all of the hangups that everybody's having, I'm trying to alleviate that. So people that are saying my uh, my position are like, Amber, I know you've had so much difficulty with, with your apprenticeship. And I understand that. I'm over here fighting for that, like for real. And I'm doing it in a way that will bring the community get together because the situation is it's family oriented. You know, the stigma behind tattoos. Well, I'm putting this in the middle of a mall. You know, we're going to have uniforms and it's a school, you know, Mwah! creatures cave. And we're going to put out dope ass work. Um, like you guys will respect a curriculum. So three books on the curriculum is, the science of tattooing, uh, drawing on the right side of the brain, and uh, drawing on the right side of color. But there is a ton more, and I could probably talk about it for an eternity, because, well, it's been a lot of work in the making. But today's that day, and unless a comet comes from the sky, or the ground opens up, <laughs> this shit's happening. So I make I'm making a million dollar tattoo studio that that my mentors I think will respect. I'm trying to give back. So that's that. Good for you. Uh, 
That's super exciting. That is super exciting. Um, and it's it's going to be nice to see uh, more of like an inside, I guess, perspective on how the situation turns about and how it goes. Because like with anything, you're going to have any old trials, tribulations, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Um, but to be able to uh, understand like different things that we wouldn't even think about when it comes to the educational, like it, such as like a, a more like educational setting compared to like your traditional apprenticeship. Um, you know, to have like uh, a very like structured, like here's books that we're going to have. We're going to have to go over in like chunks and like this, that, and the other thing. It's going to be this amount of time, like to be able to have that. And then to be able to see what comes about to, in order to improve that um, is, is super exciting. Um, but I, I, cause like, I feel like the, the apprenticeship thing, yeah, it's, it's awesome. And it's it, like, I had fun with mine and it was great and everything like that, but like, not everybody needs to go through the hazing and all the other bullshit because there's a lot of bullshit uh, that a lot of apprentices go through and there's zero need for it. You're, you're teaching somebody a craft or te giving somebody, uh, helping them with a career that can give them up for life long. Like, yeah, you can give each other shit like friends, but like the, the really uh, degradable shit uh, needs to, needs to go. Like it's, it's completely yeah. unnecessary and there's zero need for that. Um, so I'm excited for for you, creature, to um, see what you learn and experience, and like to share your experience with everybody and stuff like that. Because it's only going to help. It's only going to help. That's all it's going to fucking do. So that thank you. It is my intention. I mean, I'm not interested. Okay, look, everybody likes money. I'm not a greedy person. I, I've been homeless. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sweating it. I got a sandwich for the day and a hot shower. Woo woo. Yeah, but this way, you know, it. I, I've set it up so it's completely automated. I'm not the smartest person on the planet, so I have a, an accountant. <laughs> Again, I'm not a lawyer. Got one of those too. I'm automating it so I can literally just step away. Um, I love tattooing. I'm. I'm good at drawing pretty pictures on people. I don't know about running a business or a school, but I do know how to hire some of the most intelligent people I can find to have them do it. And that's what I'm doing. Um, I suppose know your lane. That's where I'm at. I know my lane. 100%. That helps out tremendously. Um, and, and just to have like an overall overall goal and mission in it all, um, that's just awesome. It's funny how this all worked out. I I just wanted to make a little private studio in my garage so I could tattoo my friends. Uh -huh. That's how all this started. That's cool, right? Yeah, humble beginnings, you know. Yeah. Even even gigantic snowballs start out small. So, oh my goodness, yes. So, but, yeah. Um, I was uh, completely surprised by the turnout. As soon as I made a soft, uh, a hushed announcement of the plan before we even got the um, notice that it would be okay or we were able to do it. Um. I have eight of the 10 chairs already full. People that are interested in learning. Um, and then I have, well, two chairs full for the tattooing. And then there's a, a handful of other people that are interested in participating. Um, my grand opening. So I got some, uh, I got friends in the music com uh, community. So we're going to have some acoustic live music all day. We're going to have a potluck. Um, there'll be a ribbon cutting. I'd love to invite some people. <laughs> Hint. You definitely have to take video. <laughs> Hint. <laughs> uh, that should be cool as fuck, dude. Seriously, Thanks. I'm so happy for you. Yeah, that's gonna be so fun. That was so nerve wracking too. Like, <laughs> uh huh. Uh, I, my hands are literally sweating because today is that day. 
And excitement and see- anxiety feel the same. <laughs> right. You guys are going to get to see everything because I'm having a, a tech person come in and putting up a large monitor and cameras in it. Um, so we will be live streaming this Monday mornings. Nice. All of the all oh, of cool. the free content that we have access to on YouTube, uh, we'll be running that twenty four seven. So cool. Yeah. So cool. Oh, and well, the Roku channel, Gabe's Roku channel. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, that I'm. I am. Uh, you know, I'm excited to see what happens next for you, and you know, and with this concept. And of course, like you are, you're really kind of, you know, serving your particular community and you know your community best. And so that might very well be, um, you know, I'm, I'm really, I'm really rooting for you. This is a, this is a super positive, you know, uh, thing where people can, they can learn and develop their, you know, their craft, they can mm-hmm. develop their skills. Um, but of course it's a business, right? And that's, you know, there's nothing wrong with business, right? We all have to be in business. So, Mm -hmm. uh, so I do, you know, uh, I certainly, um, you know, I'm listening to, to what you're, the way you're explaining it and, uh, oh, sorry. I'm having technical difficulties today. So if my so if if it ends abruptly, <laughs> if everything ends abruptly, <laughs> it's like it's my it's my, my poor little laptop. Anyway, no, best of luck to you, preacher. I'm really hoping for the best. Um, Spirit, good morning. Great to see you. Oh, Thanks for good morning, coming. Spirit. Good morning, morning Spirit. guys. Good morning. Hey, so creature, that's today. That's happening today. You having your grand opening or? Uh, not the grand opening, the uh, signing. We're going to go sign the lease. We got the notice on Saturday that that she'd be calling us and go, going there and doing that. That's awesome. I'm really happy okay. for you. That's really dope. Congratulations. Thanks, sir. Absolutely. A lot of work. A lot of work. Mm-hmm. Hey, I, uh, I'm a very busy person, so I watch the playbacks. The conversation that you guys were having on Sunday... On Jason, uh, Jason's channel, that was pretty good. Did you uh, that whole conversation about the needle cartridges and those uh, uh, the Apex? I think they're called Apex or power liners. Did you catch that part? I don't know. It was like right before you came in. No, I didn't catch that part. Oh man, you might want to go. You might be interested in going and checking that out. That was pretty okay, good. Good. Because I'm, I'm, I need to learn about uh, just more about needles and stuff like that. Jason is, he knows a lot about needles, so yeah, that's actually a good idea. Thanks for telling me about that. Apex, huh? Yeah, I think they're called Apex. Um, uh, basically, it's a configuration that's a liner that the center, the center needle is pulled back, so it add it allows a um ink flow, uh, smoother ink flow without tearing up the skin as quickly. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. They had a great conversation about uh, diameter. So you have your twelves versus your tens, and how that uh, uh, the trauma of the skin and the saturation of the skin and all of that it was right before you came in. Anyway, mm, okay, yeah. Sorry. No, yeah, I, 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 I must have crashed that conversation. Well, early today, so I'm gonna say bye, guys. We've got a lot to do today with the parade happening, and it's an all-day event. Oh, shit. So, enjoy. I will see you guys. Enjoy your holiday. You too. Have a great time. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Yay. Hello, Halloween. uh... We should make Halloween a holiday. Did, uh, Man, we get off, get off, off of school, get off work holiday. Yeah, absolutely. Why not? Well, that's an interesting question. You know, like so, preacher bringing up needles and stuff. Um, talking about education. 
how about like learning how to make needles? Did everybody learn how to make needles when they were learning how to tattoo? Uh, I didn't. I wish I would have learned. I want to learn so bad. Yeah, I don't want to learn. My uh, mentor said he's going to teach me soon. So, yeah, I would have loved. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Does anybody else learn? Um, I had to. Um, mm -hmm. I learned and I was doing, making the own needles and autoclave and everything like that for, gosh, I want to say at least like the first six months of my apprenticeship. Mm -hmm. And he started to go, like he started going to like on bar and shit like that after that. But yeah, it's, 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 it's a tedious process that you definitely get a fucking headache every time I did it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, sometimes I wasn't the most prepared and I'd be like, ah, shit, I got to make needles. So I'd have to show up to the shop at like seven or eight in the morning <laughs> and mm -hmm. make needles and get those rock and roll in them for the day. And then, um, make more for like, to just to prepare for the rest of the week and, the the way that I did it, because I didn't even know, like, uh, Eric, uh, not Mark, Eric, Mark, Mark, uh, Lascarbo, I can't say this, uh, from Needle Jig, he has a, like, a curved mag jig, which would have been awesome, because I would have to, like, line everything up, and then just take, you know, uh, the freaking, uh, razor blade or whatever, and then just, like, slowly and nicely make that curve, it's just, yeah. Mm. But you could have a lot of fun with it, because then you could make the curves that you want you know if you want like a little bit of a flatter curve or you know but still a curve or like a, a more of a, a grandiose curve whatever the hell you would call it um i could definitely mm -hmm. see that a lot of fun for sure yeah my original <laughs> mentor in the 90s would just order them from the magazine and they would come in a little box and they had like the the bars were dipped in this rubberish goo for for sanitary reasons and <laughs> they have to strip the goo off of them <laughs> wow uh, they came from uh i want to say spalding and rogers but i don't know if if it just when did it become just spalding I have no idea. I have no idea. Yeah, they they ended up splitting at some point. I think it was in the late eighties, early nineties. Oh shit! Yeah. He uh my uh, my original mentor ended up tracking me down <clears throat> when all all my stuff started a few years ago, and he uh he gave me his machine and his transformer, you know, all of it. It was cool. Nice. Yeah. Oh, that is cool. Yeah. What's everybody working on? I am trying to figure out a cool jack-o'-lantern for tomorrow. And I haven't come across anything I really dig yet, so it's going to be... It might take a minute, but I'll get there. I don't know if you can see that at all. Oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, you my little friend. Oh, nice. Right on. What about you, Spirit? Nice. I'm, uh, I'm working on a um, working on a value study for a tattoo I'm going to do today. Yeah. I see. Oh, uh, da, 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 da. Let me make oh, this one. Oh, here we go. I always get this one to you. There you go. Oh, cool, dude. Oh, thank you. It's a it's oh, yeah. a cover up. So um, she's uh she's she has a Jamaican flag right here. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna but you and there's words up here and down here. So I'm gonna keep the flag but cover up the words. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, you know I'm saying so. I'm just kind of just doing the the value. So I was uh so yesterday I learned um I don't know if you heard preacher but uh. Um, they were talking about just kind of doing a value study as opposed to like doing the color when you're when you're yes, doing. Yes, I did. Yeah, so that's that's kind of what I'm doing. Because I was gonna go gung ho in here with the color, you know. I was like, yeah, fuck yeah, color, you know what I mean. But they was like, nah, just right. 
you could just do the values and then you could put whatever color you want in there. It doesn't even matter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, that was some brilliant advice Jason gave about the, uh, he said he was stating about he was doing paintings and full color. And then people would come up and be like, Oh, I wish I could get that as a black and gray. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's, <laughs> That was that was actually damn good advice when when I, I said that I was like oh okay well I don't have to do all of this mm-hmm <clears throat> you know what I'm saying yeah so it's a super important thing you know to uh, know the make sure the values are there and good to yeah. go and then, then work on the chroma side of things because um, like there's so many times that you know um, like like before you start tattooing a color you know doing a color tattoo like. Um, just take a picture, you know, of your, your color palette and throw it into grayscale and to see, you know, if there's anything that needs to be darker or lighter. Um, because like, I don't know, I've, I've run into the situation so many times where I was like, oh yeah, that's fine. That's great. That'll work. And then I mm -hmm. take a picture of it and I'm like, holy cow, that's so much darker than I thought it was. So, mm -hmm. okay, I got to reevaluate that, you know try to figure out the, the color that'll work better with it and how I want to, you know, either if you have to mix it or whatever. Um, it's, it's, it's fun, you know, um, definitely takes a little bit longer for setup time, but if like the client knows and understands that, you know, it's part of the process, then everything's good to rock and roll. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and I, and I'm just now kind of learning value and, and stuff like that. Um, well, I'm just now getting to the point where I can, I'm starting to be able to apply it. So with this painting, like I'm like, well, because I, I do get kind of caught up in tonal. So I'm just simplified and I'm just like, it's going to be a, a dark, a mid-tone and a, and, a, and a light and, mm -hmm. and the rest is skin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like once like a lot of like painting and stuff like that, you'll notice that that's kind of how they they do everything. They just really block it in really chunky, really simplified on like their, their value scale and then um they start blending everything out so yeah like keep it keep it easy keep it simple you know the kiss rule mm -hmm. like, don't don't worry about over complicating it yeah because i guess you know because at the end of the day like right like it has to be able to like stand up on its own on because it's on skin you know what i'm saying like what if it all mm -hmm. just fades away you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so like mm -hmm. it, ha it has to have some type of something to like stand on mm -hmm. yeah and you've got like a really solid you know silhouette and your your darks and really holds up like you know that stuff's gonna hold up over time so the rest of it is just icing on that cake absolutely yeah, I've, been, I've been getting caught up in the icing for a long time getting caught up in the what in the icing yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so. But yeah, the the needle thing, um, that's a the paradise. I, I didn't even think of it because I always thought like the way that uh, Mark uh, was explaining the needle situation is that like, um, shit, where's the, do I have the piece of paper in here to me? I don't think I do. But uh, he was talking about how like the, the 12s and the 10s and the 08s and stuff like that. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's not so much... Uh, a huge variance on needle size like diameter it's it says it's almost like um just bringing the needles closer in together um so he was saying that like um in in a situation to where you're doing color pack he was saying like a 10 would be better than a 12 because the needles on a 10 are a little bit closer together um mm -hmm. but um yeah so it's a, it's a very very interesting take on it and um uh, yeah. and how, like yeah. What's that? Um, there, there's truth to that, but there's also a misconception. So you'll get smoother blends out of a ten. So, but you'll get uh, more a uh, fuller packing out of a twelve. Okay. And it's because of when it, uh, the analogy. I can't remember who said it. Maybe it was. Uh, Joshua Carlton, they were talking about how ink goes into the skin. And so <clears throat> basically you got to look at like a puddle when you're outside. You remember when you were a kid and you stomped your foot into the puddle and pulled your foot out? That mm -hmm. the, the water was gone. 
and then it would fill in. Well, what happens is, is the needle goes in, the needle comes out, the ink gets sucked in because of the uh, um, the glide helps create a vacuum. So it pulls the ink into the skin, and then as it heals, it balloons out. Well, when you're coming back <clears throat> American traditional, you want that full, deep saturation like the with using a medium taper or a short taper. But if you're wanting to get a smooth, clean, layered color, uh, you use a 10. But the problem with the 10 is that it causes more trauma versus just punching the hole and putting in the color and being out. See what I mean? Yes. Yeah. I definitely understand. That. that definitely makes sense. I mean, meh, that's what I got. <laughs> I would also like to uh, add <clears throat> to this conversation that um, the particles, the individual particles, the, the thickness of the ink matters too. So if you have a thin ink that has smaller particles and you have a bigger hole, it's going to take more ink, more of that ink to fill that hole. So you're not going to necessarily have complete saturation, but you have a thicker ink with larger particles. Um, <clears throat> you know, like one of those inks that just goes in like glue. It might be a little harder to pack it in, but it's going to be something more solid. It's going to it's going to have larger particles. You know, in that in that ink to take up more space to block the light in order for you to see it. Nice. So. So the flake pigments should, um, being that they're thicker, like the raw products versus the micro pigments, like say dynamic, what would you recommend to use for a flake pigment? Um, to be honest with you, um, I've heard really good things about solid, <clears throat> solid infusion. Okay. Okay. Um, no, no. I, I mean, um, what, what, what do you think would work best for a a flake pigment? To when you apply? say flake, what do you mean flake? Um. Okay. So, where's Jason when you need him? So, mm. <laughs> um, micro dispersed pigment versus flake pigment. Uh, the all inks are made out of stuff, and that stuff, depending on how it, um mixes with the liquid mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, or the the how fine the particulates are as well those things contribute to that i'm used to using more of a flake pigment on uh, which is a raw product and they have the thicker thicker inks and things like that like you were referring to like they're underground brown oh my god it's liquid chocolate and hmm. I have to dilute that shit. Um, but I noticed that I get a better pack on that if I'm using a standard instead of using something that's uh, um, for like I uh, like dynamic when I do black and gray. I can get these real nice smooth shades out of it uh, because I know that all I have to do is barely touch the skin and it'll go in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like nice. Yes, I think. What ink is that? Hmm. What ink? What, what ink is that? Oh, uh, uh, dynamic triple black. You have to be careful. Oh, it, it black. Leaves, yeah, yeah. yeah, it leaves a nice shiny uh, for black and gray, and uh, you, you do have to dilute it. So if you're wanting to make a, a, a set, a gray wash set without opaques, I would use one drop and a medium cap and then do your thing from there and yeah because it it, it saturates that easily but huh, anyway yeah that's me <clears throat> yeah no nah, that's good advice um that's a that's a nice uh additive to what i'm saying i think we're kind of on the same page really i mean like you you seem to kind of understand the difference between the thick and thin inks um absolutely yeah dude yeah absolutely how long have you been in the game, Christian? Oh, uh, I technically I had three apprenticeships. I have five years in total. Um, I have a lot of research 
uh, I did a lot of synthetic skins before I ever touched humans. Mm -hmm. I probably did 250 approximately tattoos on <clears throat> synthetic skins before I transferred to people. Um, That's what's now, up. You took your time. Uh, yes, sir. Um, now, to be fair, though, in the 90s, for years, I was doing the apprentice stuff uh, for my uh, first mentor. I, I, yeah, I was going to ask, you seem, like you, you seem like you started a while ago. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you, it seems like you spread it over time. Yeah, um, I, I didn't think I was going to be able to do it because my artistic chops were not up to the level that I needed them. And I thought, I, I was like everybody understand. else. I'm like, oh, you know, I, I wasn't born with that, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> right. right. Oh, and so, funny. so, right. so, so I, I did the, I went out and got the real job and did that. Mm -hmm. And so now, uh, yeah, when I went back, I just, I did it from an older person perspective. I didn't want to hurt my friends, do stupid tattoos and get a bad mm -hmm. reputation. So mm -hmm. I did the adult version and then trained myself with a lot of help. And yeah, here we are. Cool. I probably only have about, I, I, I don't know. We'll say 500 tattoos on human skin. Okay. Awesome. Well, here's to five million more. Oh my God! Yeah. <laughs> okay, man. Hey, James is here. Hi, James. How you been? Hey, hey. James. <laughs> Welcome back. Hey. It's that's so funny. It's like my computer totally crashed, but the but the show must go on, <laughs> right? Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, we Somebody have so much to learn from each other. I, is, is, I don't. Anyway, whatever. Um, I don't, yeah, yeah, we, uh, we definitely do. Uh, I'm sure uh, it looks like you all were having a great conversation. Don't mind me. Carry on. What uh, what were what, what were y'all talking about? We were talking about uh, flake pigment uh, inks versus micro pigment inks. Do you know much about that? Well, so uh, I, I wouldn't say that I know uh, too much, but just simply that there is the difference between like a micro dispersion in the ink versus like these more powder, you know, the flake, the powdered pigment <coughs> style. Uh, I know that raw is um, their, their, lot, their formulations is a, is a lot closer to that older powder pigment. The, the particles are bigger. That's my understanding. Um, but yeah, no, I think there's a, it, it's a fascinating situation and it really brings up a, a I think an interesting uh, topic that I would, uh, that I would want to, you know, get all of your feedback on if we could. And that is upcoming legislation uh, that's 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 just on the horizon, and I, and I I think a lot of tattooers aren't even aware of this, but um, but it's happening, and so there's uh, legislation has been passed. It's called uh, uh, the Modernization of Cosmetics Act or Regulations Act or MOCRA. That's the that's the acronym for it, MOCRA, and so. Um, what this essentially means is that the law is being created at this moment. While we're sitting here hanging out, talking, talking shop, you know what I mean? Uh, chopping it up. Uh, there are rules being drafted right now that are going to impact your day to day as tattooers. And so what this means is that the federal government, the, uh, you know, the FDA in this case, is going to start regulating inks, needles, as well as probably <clears throat> just about everything that's used in the, in the procedure of doing a tattoo. Um, what are your thoughts, gang? What are you, uh, <laughs> does anybody have any thoughts about, about what um, that might uh, look like? I, I, I understand like the need for regulations, um, but it's hard to regulate something properly when you know 
excuse language, but fuck all about it, you know? Um, so it's kind of a scary thing to where um, I can understand them being like wanting to know that uh, this is like ink's been, you know, used in a certain amount of time and then the needles are, you know, good and like having all, like, all the preparation and everything for it. But, like I get that and like shit ton of tattooers, we do it. Like we've already been doing that shit for years, you know, because we give a shit about our clients. We don't make sure it's good. But like to have somebody else come in and be like, ah, let's do this. It's like, no, dude, like, but so like if we can all just like, get on the same page have a game plan of like hey this is all the stuff that we're doing and they're like hey this is what we want to do okay cool let's meet in the middle let's figure it out because just to have it's it just yeah dude it would yeah just the whole idea of just somebody coming in and be like well let's do this and they don't know a damn thing about tattooing you know all they know is just like whatever the hell that they've come across online which who knows what they've read because there's so much information on the, the good old internets, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, I gotta finish signing up with APT, but um, yeah, it's just yeah, just getting on the same page and having like a lot more put together and just a lot more uh, interaction with the 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 political side of shit when it comes to like the governments and all that. Because like in in Arizona, it's not. It's not regulated they don't really give a shit in idaho it's not really regulated they don't give a shit but like that doesn't mean that like it's going to be like that forever so that surprises me about idaho to be honest oh idaho doesn't get two shits about tattoo artists they don't fucking care they right don't. but that idaho's real hardcore mormon uh yeah it was surprisingly you figured utah would be more hardcore mormon than what idaho is but right right um, but I, I've I've tattooed people like um, a couple. They're they're Mormon, you know, super devout, everything like that. I've tattooed them, everything, you know. So like, it's you know whatever. But still, just like the whole when it comes to like the regulation side of things, like legally, it, with parents' consent and with artists' you know consent too, you can tattoo somebody as young as fourteen years old legally in Idaho. Wow, that's insane. That is absolutely insane. I have no idea why that's even legal. That's dumb. That's so dumb. Um, because like to think about who we are when we're 14 to who we are when we're 15 and to say like how much we change at those ages. Like, but yeah, but yeah. So, but yeah, back to the point of like, just because there's not regulations now doesn't mean there's not going to be regulations tomorrow. And it's, just to have something already there to where like, oh, we want to regulate. Okay, cool. We got you covered. Here you go. This is what you need to do. This is what's going to work best for you. You know, because it's just a matter of fucking time. So, so yeah. with, with, with Mokra, um, and that would be like the federal side of things. So that means mm -hmm. that every state's going to have to follow this, or is that just states that are more regulated? No, it would be it would be countrywide. It'd be the okay. entire United States because it's federal. So okay. it would, uh, you know, um, so like each one of our rules that where we where we practice tattooing at, it's gonna be, uh, you know, governed by the local the county health board. That's how it's that's how it's set up now. Everybody everybody's rules are based on what the county, what your, what your local health board permits. And then of course, there's going to be state laws that will also be a part of it. This, at this stage, I don't believe there are any federal regulations that impact tattooing that I can, that I, that I know. Of. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So, but this is, but this is one, this is definitely one. It's going to be a thing. Yeah. So the FDA has never regulated tattoo ink before. And that's always been the case. Right. Now uh, that's changed. It's going to start doing it, and um, so again, you know, just to have an optimistic point of view, I hope that it's going to be in the spirit of better health. But of course, that will keep uh, you know the rich traditions of tattooing in mind because we want to make sure that our you know that our our quality doesn't become diminished through the replacement inks that will have to be made because they, you know, essentially there will, you know, inks will get banned with this regulation. That's, that's like going to happen. You know what I mean? Well, so, this is not the yeah. so, you know, 
that that whole thing in our government, they're looking at what happened in the EU with all the inks over there, with the red and the green. Now, when they went through, there was no protection. People like Ben Shaw, they didn't have that. They didn't have the APT. And because of that, their oversight overshadowed everything for, well, it's still kind of a mess. Um, but that's the whole point of of the APT and everything is they're taking that information and these new recipes that are going to be applied for supplied by our government. But the recipes have already been stabilized. So we won't have to be as concerned about losing the colors. That was my sentence. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you for well, it, nothing has been nothing has been sort of decided on just yet. Okay. So the hope the hope is that we, uh, you know, that we as a community, as a tattoo community, could unify and and uh, you know uh, through solidarity come up with with recommendations that is that are going to be um, useful. Right, because again, we want we of course we all want better health and safety for ourselves and our ones we love and our clients and everybody else. Uh, however, uh, once once a particular formulation is banned, it will be banned. It will be illegal to use it. And some of the you know again bring up the European angle. There are artists in Europe who, it's my understanding, they are you know they're being prosecuted because they're using the banned inks that we use here. And there's a lot of things that are different here than are, you know, than in the rest of the world, for instance. Um, but we should, I, we should be aware of it. We should know that this is coming. And, uh, and so if, if it impacts you in a negative way, um, it, will, it will be difficult to change it. It would be very difficult to change it if uh, if you um, once it once it becomes instituted, it would be difficult to change. That's oh. essentially what the uh, the message is. So, um, but yeah, that's uh, you know, ink is important, and I think it's a really uh, uh, it's a very interesting topic. But no conversation on ink these days would be uh, complete without uh, without mentioning what's happening on the you know in our regulations things that are gonna things that are gonna impact you and things are gonna impact um uh the entire you know the entire tattooing industry in the united states so anyway there uh that, <laughs> that's that's just something to something to, to consider right the, the apt the alliance of professional tattooists is actively working on this project and so if you'd like to learn more you can of course uh go to um what is uh what is their website of course uh of course i forget it right now it's, alliance uh, yeah the alliance website is uh save tattoos uh dot com i believe save tattoos yeah safe dash tattoos dot com safe dash tattoos dot com yeah. so um yeah check them out Join up. If you do tattoos, you should consider joining. I know it costs money. It totally does. <laughs> it, this, it costs money to join it. But this is a trade or It's your trade organization. It's really about you, about your practice. And so um, I, I, we were talking about it earlier, right? The business, there's nothing wrong with business. Um, uh -uh. We're all in business. And, and uh, money is a part of the medium that we use to conduct our business uh, mm -hmm. anyway this is just something to consider right it's um if you want to um have a say then this is how this is how you this is how you vote essentially with your wallet right <laughs> you want to join up and you want to you know get involved and i think that's the that's the best thing that, that you can do so um oh, well everybody um 
so it has been, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, please. Right, so sorry. No, so sorry. no, go ahead. Um, if, if I wanted to be more proactive about it, um, or if somebody else does too as well, that's, that's listening, um, the best manner to go about to see what your state is doing with this um, is this somebody I would call up to like the the health and welfare kind of department type of thing um, and, and talk to them and be like, hey, who do I need to talk about this, that and the other thing to try to figure out what you guys plan on doing with this or this, that and the other thing? That's a great question. Uh, right now, there are lots of committees that are dedicated to this project within the APT and uh, they currently meet on Discord. Oh, the Discord. So right. You can you can uh, find out more by joining the APT, getting access to the Discord channel, and you can join up that way. Um, again, just really being a member in good standing is a is another. You know, I mean, that's that's really ultimately like you know what's 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 going to push this over the finish line, as it were. Um, but you get on the on the Discord and you uh, start participating in things, then I think you know. You know, more hands is gonna is really gonna make it more effective. Yeah. But what is what are what are we recommending and stuff? Well, of course we want to learn more. So more scientific uh, findings, right? It's more more research <laughs> into this area before you know before rules are instituted. Having some having some research to to back it up, I think is gonna be you know it's really gonna be the the best course. There hasn't been a lot of, just, just frankly speaking, there hasn't been a lot of research into the uh, the long term effects of like having tattooed your body, right? Having ink in your in your flesh. There just hasn't been a lot of a lot of that. Um, generally speaking, uh, you know, the medical establishment is for the most part somewhat somewhat uh, you know against tattoos. They just sort of, they, they don't recommend them. Um, they're associated with uh, adverse outcomes and stuff. I don't believe this to be true as somebody that have had tattoos. I do them, I, you know, I don't believe that. And so if you're watching this, you're probably uh, the same sort of uh, philosophy there. Smoking cigarettes is worse than tattoos. I, I agree with you. I, I think that, I think that's, um, I think that's, that's, you know, apparently true really do mm -hmm. so uh how do how do we get more involved again I, I would say join up join the apt if you're a practicing tattoo artist and then of course uh, there will be ways for you to get more involved as uh, as once you once you get involved there'll be more ways to participate and to help out so these are and there'll be more information about it as well um i'm just sort of you know, don't shoot the messenger, right? I'm just like, just trying to bring it up and let everybody know. Sometimes things have to happen, right? Sometimes the chips fall where they may. Um, like I said, if this all goes down and, and you're not happy about it, then I don't know. You know, it's, again, it might, this might be the thing that, like, that does unify the, you know, the community, the industry, as it were. But, you know, there is a, there's an ever, you know, increasing creep of, uh, you know, of corporate interest in the industry itself. Mm -hmm. So many of the products that you already are using, um, they're, you know, they're owned by, uh, you know, by multinational corporate interest. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying this is uh, wrong one way or the other, but but it doesn't say that on the box, right? Yeah. On the box, it still says the trusted name of the manufacturer that you always know, right? So uh, <laughs> you should know, right? You should be aware of it. They they bought that company, right? Not to make it better, but for the box, right? So they could put their oh. shit in the box. You know what I mean? They sell it to you. Um, so, you know, again, there's a, there's a lot to it, right? And we, I think for the most part, we just, we're, you have to focus on your drawing. You have to focus on your, you know, getting better at your craft. You have to focus at, you know, focus on getting better at your business, as it were. But this is a part of it. So mm -hmm. Like it or not, mm -hmm. that you're, you know, you're, you're always voting with your wallet. You have to buy supplies, right? Um, you have to, you know, figure out whether you want to be a part of your trade organization, the APT, or not. Um, 
And then every state, every county is going to have a different set of rules, uh, and it can be challenging to navigate those. And this is where a state representative from the APT could come in handy, right? So if you're having trouble with your local health department or your state, you can always contact the APT and have them uh, dispatch one of their state reps because there are reps in all the states. And they can, they, they can help you. Like there are things that they can, uh, they can certainly be there for support. So these are some of the things, uh, you know, just to, just to put it on your radar, just so that you're, that you're aware of it. Um, they're happening right now and uh, they are, they're going to be, they're going to be impactful to your mm -hmm. practice and your, you know, your tattoo. So, Right on. Well, uh, I guess today is a drawing and study day. You know what I mean? So, Absolutely. I'm going to try to figure out as much as I can and be a little bit more uh, interactive with Discord because they completely spaced about how they have like every single state. So, Well, again, I think there's, um, it's very, you know, there's a lot to it. And, uh, you know, it's a lot to ask. You know, it's a big ask, I think asking you for money, asking you for your time to volunteer and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I was, uh, uh, I was considering adding that into what I'm putting together as part of the curriculum for them to sign up. Would you recommend that? I think, uh, I think you, you can join, join them yourself and then you know, and then find out more about it. Because I think it's, you can't really compel people to join. You know what I mean? It, it's probably going to be best if they, they, they decide on their own that this is what they want to do. Because ultimately, you know, for the most part, like, for the most part, tattooers are independent contractors. And sometimes they're employees. You know what I mean? That There are some models, there are some business models out there where some shops have kind of been able to crack the code, become an employer of tattoo, tattoo. Jesse Smith. For example, yeah. And uh, and so when when you're an employee, right, you can, you know, a lot of times you can gain access to health insurance. You're going to have a payroll and your taxes will be taken care of for you, right? There's going to, there's a lot, there are benefits to being, you know, an employee sometimes. Depends on how you like to conduct your business mm -hmm. well for the most part and this has generally been the case is that tattoo artists are independent contractors um and again there are you know it's uh i think i think some some shops really sort of they really walk a fine line between you know like what they're allowed to do and what they are not as far as well that goes. i guess another in, in this regard because it's more school oriented um the students will have to basically fill out all of the curriculum and then you know along with bloodborne pathogens first aid and all that you wouldn't rec uh so should i put in it just as a recommendation yeah yeah definitely rec you know recommend it to people that you um that you tattoo around I know that I do, I, you know, I, I recommend it to people that I tattoo with and, um, you know, whenever I go to conventions and stuff, I always take some, okay. some, uh, you know, propaganda with me. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I think it, it, it is important, but, um, propaganda. Uh, but the AP, APT has its own, it has its own curriculum for the education of, uh, of tattooers as well. Um, and so it's, again, there's, there's work that's being done on this. There's work that there's work that they are that they are trying to, to do to to make sure that it is as comprehensive as it possibly can be. Um, anyway, there is a, there's there's there is so much out there to know about about your business, and so of course you have to focus on the on those fundamentals and those things that we were talking about. But you know. Don't be like an ostrich, right, with your head in the sand, right? You have to be aware 
of what's going to, you know, what's happening. Mm-hmm. So definitely, the um, more we know, the better. Mm-hmm. Well, I, you know, I don't know if it, <laughs> I don't know if it <laughs> ends up being better or not. It could be the, you know, the more you know, the more terrifying it is. But at the same <laughs> time, right, this is certainly the thing that I, you know, I, I, you know, I, I would like to make sure that we include it in any conversation that we're having, especially around the shops, right? Mm-hmm. Around your shop, talking to talking to others about mm-hmm. inks and, and you know and needles. Mm-hmm. You should also bring up that hey, there's new federal regulations that are going to come in mm-hmm. about your ink and needles. Because every time, for some reason, the manufacturers aren't like alerting everybody. I think like you know as urgently as they could. Um, and that's you know, and sometimes I get that feedback. Like I'll you know I'll sort of talk about it, and people will say like, well, this this ink manufacturer and that ink manufacturer. They're huge. They're not going to let anything like this happen. And it's, it's like, well, then just wait. <laughs> just wait and see. So it, it's not a, you know, again, this is not a scare tactic. It's just a, it's just a reality. That's all. And so being, you know, trying to get in now and to have something to say about it might very well be um, a good proactive move. However, uh, you know, if you wait till afterwards, it will be very difficult to uh, to have any kind of sway, uh, you know, after it's all after it's said and done. So these mm-hmm. are, you know, these are important things. And um, you know, if you want to learn more, of course, there is information about this um, at safe-tattoos.com. You can learn more. Um, so yeah, check it out. Uh, even Tattoo Smart did a, you know. Uh, if you go to Russ Abbott's Tattoo Smart site, you know, he has a, a very comprehensive, you know, uh, essay about this particular situation. So it's it's certainly something that's being talked about. Uh, so just be aware. Okay. Well, yeah, uh, right. you know, the, the needle cartridges will be, uh, um, I don't know what I say. Monitored, upgraded, improved. Um, there's so much quality difference from one brand to another. Will they regulate that? I don't know. I really don't know what's going to happen. But again, it's comprehensive as far as all the products. So okay. it will be ink, and it will be the needles, and you know, and likely the likely the bandages that you use. Um, the tattoo glide that you use, all of that stuff, it'll all be subject to the new regu- federal regulations. And so again, that will that will be on top of your local regulations because sometimes you know certain um, certain counties will want you to have a certain amount of hours to get you know a license. Some counties are unregulated. We, we went over that. You know that some states have counties and they they don't regulate tattooing per se. Perhaps they, it's more of a, a you know it's regulated through through business like the zoning or something like that. There's uh, I think a lot in most cases it's often there's a little there's a little bit of rule that you know in most cases. But um, so I you know like. I recently went to Massachusetts to do some tattoos. I know Kyle, you recently did some tattoos in Massachusetts as well. We're not from there, but in order to be able to to do tattoos there, uh, the county that I was working in, uh, I had to get, you know, several new, uh, you know, certifications, CPR first aid, and then as well as like having a, a, you know, an anatomy and physiology sort of certification as well. Had to have them so I could work there. Uh, did it, and you know it didn't kill me. It was you know actually it was challenging, but uh, in the in the end, uh, I think it was beneficial in, in a lot of ways. Um, Kyle, how about you? Did you have to did you have to get new certifications so you could tattoo? Um, yeah, yeah. I just it wasn't too complicated. Just had to get the, the my you know make sure my blood bloodborne pathogens were up to date. 
and then just had to like basically register with the city of Hancock, um, which was like a hundred bucks. And then just proof of, uh, oh, making sure like my, all my, I'm up to date on my uh, hep B vaccine um, and the bloodborne pathogens and then the hundred dollars to get the permit for the city of Hancock. But that was it really nothing too, too crazy. And you know, the health department walked by and made sure you had, cause you had to display both. So I had to make sure that my, you know, displaying the blood born and then also the permit to tattoo in the city of Hancock, stuff like that. So um, there's definitely a lot more regulation in that state than there, than I've experienced in other states. So, but it's just, I don't know, it's just kind of nice reassuring, you know, that's like, they give a shit, I guess. <laughs> so to an extent, you know, but. So it wasn't yeah. anything too, too crazy, yep. but every, every state's different. I think so. Yeah, I think that's that's the thing. So there, you know, you're going to have all those rules, whatever it is, and then these new ones. These mm -hmm. new ones are coming. So um, anyway, just uh, <laughs> just something to hopefully to you know, the more you know, like we said, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> it may not be so positive, but like at least you know how to navigate that sh you know stuff. So <laughs> yeah. So, um, well. Uh, this was uh, was an interesting, <laughs> interesting experience today. I'm so glad you all kept it going, and I was able to hop back on here. Um, again, I apologize for my technical difficulties, but I hope to have it all settled. Uh, hope to get every all the bugs worked out uh, for next time. Um, yeah. I think we're at uh, we're at a great point to end it for today. Yeah. Um, so why don't we uh, just do a couple quick sign offs, and then we'll uh, then we'll get on with it right so kyle let me have you start okay uh my name is kyle olson i tattoo out of tucson arizona in a studio called trinity art collective um if you want to reach out and get a hold of me um you're more than welcome to do so um you can do that at either trinityartcollective.com or you can go to instagram and my handle is olson underscore tattoos o-l-s-o-n and always happy to talk to anybody about anything art um it's it's my thing so um thanks as always thanks james thanks for having us um it's always fun so it's, it's, it's always the best way to start off the week so awesome thank you so much kyle it was really great to great to catch up with you uh and i'm excited to see the jack-o-lantern design that you're working on too so i can uh, i can be good if i can yeah, figure it out <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> preacher let's have your yeah. sign offs please all right, Creatures Cave everywhere. Uh, we are opening up in Marion, Ohio at Southland Mall. Um, not open yet. We don't have a solid date. We're going to do a soft open and then a, and then the grand opening. So I will keep everyone posted. And thank you, James, for everything. Lots more stuff to study now. Thank you. So I'm here. I appreciate it. Um, and yeah. You have a great week, too. Happy Halloween. Thank you so much, Creature. Yeah, really, uh, you know, again, I'm rooting for you. And I and I do, uh, you know, I so I, I believe in you personally. And so, you know, this this new project, this new venture, um, I'm really sending, you know, uh, as much as much positivity as I can. Good luck with it. It's going to be a challenge for sure. But also, you know, I know that you, uh, you know, you have a lot of perseverance. So, um so yeah, that's excellent. Um, everybody's doing really cool stuff. Again, I want to thank Amber for coming earlier. The Spirit, thanks for joining us, everybody. Uh, I'm James Wisdom. Um, you can find me on the internet at Tattooing Wisdom. This has been Drawing for Tattooers. I want to say real quick thanks to, to Guy and Gabe <laughs> for, for this for this platform. Again, we uh, you know we really appreciate everything that you all do behind the scenes um and uh yeah thanks again for uh for being the, the founders and inspiration behind this community um anyway happy drawing everybody right